the night sky. For as long as we have looked up at it, it has fascinated us. To our ancestors, it was something even more. They discovered patterns in the stars, using them as a guide for their way of life. They were the first astronomers. As they watched the sky over many nights, they noticed something else. Some of those brightest objects did not follow the same path as the rest of the stars. Future astronomers would reveal that these mysterious objects are planets, and that we live on one called Earth. Our planet supports and sustains life, but what about the others? Is there other life out there in the universe? Could there be another planet like our own? And so begins a new quest for astronomers. Welcome to Expedition Earth. Our journey begins by first exploring our solar system. Using telescopes and even robotic spacecraft, we see worlds that are very different from Earth. A mixture of rocky planets, gas giants, and ice giants. None of them appear to have life. The other planets in our solar system won't do. For our expedition to continue, we must search elsewhere. Beyond our solar system, there are billions of stars. Astronomers are confident there should be just as many planets in orbit around them. They have even given them a name, exoplanets. Now, all we have to do is find them. Stars are very different from planets. They emit their own light and are very bright. So we can see them even over vast distances. Planets cannot make light. They can only reflect it. The closer they are to their star, the brighter they are. If they are too far away, they are too dim to see. And so exoplanets are very much harder to see than their stars. Detecting these new worlds directly will be difficult. Perhaps there's another way to accomplish Expedition Earth. Let's look to some explorers of the past. Around 300 years ago, the exact distance from the Earth to the Sun was unknown. Then, a clever astronomer offered a solution that would transform scientists into adventurers. They traveled the world to catch a rare and spectacular astronomical event a transit of Venus. What they observed was Venus silhouetted as it crossed in front of the Sun, a sight only possible every 100 years or so, when the Earth and Venus are lined up just right. By carefully measuring the transit from different locations across the world, it was finally possible to calculate the exact distance to the Sun. During its transit, Venus was also blocking some of the Sun's light. For a very brief period, the Sun was dimmed ever so slightly. This tiny dip in starlight is the key to the next part of our journey. 
Astronomers used large telescopes on Earth to search for exoplanets as they passed between the Earth and their stars. Their transit method worked, revealing new planets from dips in starlight. To take Expedition Earth to the next level, we need a clearer view. It's time to move into orbit with the Kepler Space Telescope. Launched in 2009, Kepler has been watching hundreds of stars in the constellation Cygnus, monitoring them for many hours to detect tiny changes in starlight. We can see that it hasn't taken Kepler long to discover potential exoplanets. But then, an equipment failure caused Kepler's view to start drifting away from the exoplanets. It can no longer look at the same patch of sky for many hours at a time. We need a new plan to continue our search for other worlds. Each time Kepler orbits the Earth, it can now see many patches of stars. While it can't watch them for as long, it can come back to them many times. With this new perspective, Kepler has completed its mission, finding thousands of exoplanets. Now, we must see what these new worlds are like. Each dip of starlight is different. By carefully measuring how the star's brightness changed, we can find the planet's size. By recording the time between each transit, we find how far the planet is from its star. Both are critical to our expedition. From Kepler, we see that exoplanets come in all different sizes. Some are gas giants larger than Jupiter. Most are smaller and come in two varieties, super-Earths or mini-Neptunes. The exoplanets themselves are not the only discovery. Kepler has confirmed that stars very different from our Sun can also host rocky planets. It even looks like small stars such as TRAPPIST-1 may have several Earth-sized rocky worlds. Our idea of the typical solar system is changing. Kepler has given us a treasure trove of Earth-sized worlds to investigate. The first stage of our journey is complete, but the expedition does not end here. Water is thought to be a crucial element for life to exist. Earth is exceptional because it has liquid water on its surface. Kepler found exoplanets that are the right size. Now, we must see if they have liquid water too. But we can't see their surfaces, so how do we answer this? Kepler also gave us each planet's distance from its star. With this information, we can make an educated guess. Surrounding every star is a region called the Goldilocks Zone, set by the size and temperature of the star. Here, conditions are just right for liquid water to be found on a rocky exoplanet. Being in the right place is important, 
but it doesn't always mean we will find water. Consider Venus, Earth's twin in size and within the Goldilocks region of our Sun. Its hostile surface holds no liquid water. Time has changed Venus. Billions of years ago, it likely had oceans. But today, only a toxic atmosphere and superheated surface remain. Liquid water and life as we know it could not survive here. Luckily, Kepler has revealed dozens of Earth-sized planets inside their Goldilocks zones. There is a chance that they could have the right conditions for life to exist. And with many more exoplanets left to discover, Expedition Earth must continue. Explorers of the past used the transit of Venus to unveil knowledge of our solar system. Today, astronomers are using the transit method to discover new planets and even other solar systems. Our ancestors sparked our fascination with the sky, starting our journey to the stars. Future explorers will reveal the secrets of new solar systems. One day, we may even travel to one. The beginning of a bold new chapter in Expedition Earth. <laughs>